We're gonna talk about how monsters are made for movies. Okay. How are monsters created for movies, Ooh. all right? So I kind of broke this down. I want to get into technicals. I want to get into the production side of things. I have a question. Go for it. Did you watch that Corridor video? No, I did not. Okay. Why? Uh, where they talk about the making of Vecna. No, I didn't watch that one. I've I, watched other I videos on Vecna. I, did. I, I didn't watch I did. the Corridor one. Okay, because they were with one of the artists who worked on Vecna. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they went into some details about how he was created. I saw, I've saw. i seen behind the scenes stuff. I don't is know it if it was their cheese video. Cheese pizza? No, no, it's not <laughs> cheese pizza. All right, so check this out. In my mind, so I'm breaking this down based on what I can observe and what mm -hmm. I'm trying to help people understand that might be searching or asking this question. First, we got practical. Yeah. Then we got animated. Then we have a category that's a little different I call hidden. Oh, I thought you were going to say practically animated. No. Oh. Hidden something like jaws yeah, yeah now he became practical at yeah. the end mm -hmm. but for the most part you can hide your monster mm -hmm. and give the give the illusion of mystery so that's that's a way to create and then also you can do a mix of all of them right yeah. which is so, what a lot of people are doing nowadays yes uh you mix it up you try to go as practical as you can but then you add the animation you add the vfx and you get somewhere what not like gremlins you know they were all puppetry. All practicals. Which I love, personally. <laughs> I so, love it. So, um, with that said, what are some of your guys' favorite monsters in this category? And so, when, when we say practical, Ooh. we're talking about... The practical? We're talking about artists dressing up puppets or humans to become monsters. Um, or, like, a big animatronics, like... The two big, two big ones for me. You guys know aliens. Yeah, yeah. Predators. That's yeah, yeah. Xenomorphs from the Alien series and, and the Yaucha from Predator. Yeah. Uh, both of those, um, there's a lot of, most of the early movies are almost all practical effects, which is fantastic. And even in Alien vs. Predator, where they mix in CG and practical, yeah. I think actually a lot of it actually looks really good. Um, so I love those two. My favorite practical monster that we've seen on any thing, mm. any film we've they've seen so far was way back in the probably early 2000s, maybe late 90s, uh, BBC made Narnia. Aslan was a puppet. <laughs> they made Aslan as a puppet. It was so he, good. He talked like it was, it so, was good. so good. You're crazy, bro. Aslan talked like this. He's not this. a monster. But Aslan he was a great like practical. This. <laughs> it was so bad. I would think more of the wolf from the never ending story. Ooh. Now that's that's freaking creepy. They that's also had creepy, a weird yeah. practical. Well, I'm wolf not bringing up a picture. We, we've done that like we've four times. We've done that before, yeah. But I, it's okay. scary. Practical speaking, I, I love I love what I'm seeing these days. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Vecna is kind of going to become iconic. Yeah, he is. Vecna is incredibly good. Um, things like Jaws left us. Uh, why I put Hidden up there is because Jaws, in my in my opinion, we should have got a a sense of scale without having to show us outright. Yeah, because once we saw the animatronic, once we saw the practical creature mm -hmm. for Jaws. In my, I became disconnected because the back then mm, the technology mm, just wasn't mm. there to no, make no, it no, as good. They only show they only bit. show basically the mouth. No, they show the whole thing. They show a uh, lot. It of, jumps up on the boat, bro. Yeah, but the, and they, they show a lot of it, his but, mouth. But it's still practical. No, I'm I, just saying you, it, they can't I think just the the hide the whole movie. No, you can, you can. You ever seen Tremors? Kevin Bacon. That's a lot of hidden, and I have and it's seen. Good. There's a lot the of short film good. hidden. <laughs> There's a lot of werewolf uh, shorts and a lot of werewolf indie films that they don't ever show the werewolf. Yeah, no, they, they don't. It. They don't. Um, no, the, yeah, I know about the werewolf. You know, I'm, I'm just saying very, you, you very can do it. You can do scene. it. We all know what a shark looks like. Mm -hmm. It would have been cool to see. Like you can get like close ups and all kinds of stuff to like show the scarring on the, the yeah. shark, show the fin, get it, get silhouettes. You know. 
scope of size. But when I saw Jaws in all his glory on top of the ship, I lost connection a little mm-hmm. bit. And I wish they would have remained hidden. So are so, we just right, like, oh, are we doing each of these? What's our favorite monster, monster from no, each of these? No, we're not talking about what our favorite monster is. Okay. I want you to said, hear, what's your favorite monster from Practical? And I'm from like, Practical, yeah. What's your favorite monster from Animated? <laughs> Well, you can go ahead and give me what what's your favorite animated, but I don't really think I, I'm more interested to hear what do you think was done There's most so effectively. There's so many good ones. Not 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 favorite, but what's most effective? I think the I think the there is a mixture, but I think that opening of the T Rex breaking the fence, coming out in the rain in the yeah. dark of yeah. animated monsters, the T Rex. It was decent. It's. I love, like, that's so iconic. It's so beautiful. Wait, which one are you talking about? The first Dr- one. Jurassic Park. But that wasn't animated. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, it was. When he, when the T-Rex oh, breaks oh, through the fence. Oh, you mean when he walks. And, it, and, and she comes out, and, and it's it's raining. You see her yes, full body. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, she comes through, and she roars. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. You we know? watched it a bunch of times, try to figure out the it's, sound. Yeah. It's beautiful, and it's animated. That is animated. It's moments before we got like that close up where she raises her head, mm-hmm. and, and, and that was practical. And, and the foot, and when it gets close. But I'm talking that, l- seeing that, mm-hmm. right? The animated version of that is some of my favorite work. Mm-hmm. Uh, entirely animated monsters. You can you can break it down to what I put on the so screen. many good ones. I, I put this on my screen. Demogorgon is good. Yeah. Demogorgon Death Angel good. is Death Angel really from good. A Quiet Place, in my opinion, is my favorite. That's mm-hmm. why I put it up here. I don't. I haven't seen as believable and creepy and non practical monster that had me shaking in my boots as much as A Quiet Place yeah. and those monsters. We just watched. Um, uh, I want to say live, die, repeat. It's not live, die, repeat. Um, uh, Edge, Edge of tomorrow. tomorrow. Those are um, good too. Those, those are really are solid. Pretty solid. I'm trying to remember what they look like. Very arm heavy. Almost tentacly. Yeah. Let me let me remind myself. It's been like a few years since I got an opportunity to watch Edge of Tomorrow. And there's a ton of full animation monster like creatures in Pirates. <laughs> So like Davy Jones is monstrous, the skeletons, the kraken, um, all of these different things, and those are almost entirely CG. Uh, yeah, is that one. Oh heck, dude, yeah. the blue one with its mouth open. I remember this. I freaking love it, dude. Man, I was gonna pick this from a monster, but I couldn't remember this. That was what I was thinking about this of. This one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeesh. They are so cool looking, man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it, they are freaking cool, man. They're almost all they're it's made up of looks tentacles, like, like uh, roots in a tree. Yeah, yeah, they are kind of root esque. Um, with that said, I wanted to parlay this into parlay. I want to parlay this into let's get a professional in the monster realm. Okay, are we can give this us like phone a friend. It, or is, no, we're just gonna. <laughs> 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 no, we're not phoning nobody. Oh. But we are going to take a note from one of the one of the most iconic monster film directors. Okay, Guillermo del Toro. Ah, Guillermo. Yeah, I would say he's kind of he's up. Pretty there. well versed. Guillermo's done a, a <laughs> yeah, lot of monsters. Yeah, 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 freaking. I I've not watched The Strain, uh, but I want to. It's vampire heavy. You um. He also just did the Cabinet of. Curiosity. Curiosity. We didn't well, watch he didn't direct it, but he he's co-directing, creating. Yeah, he, Cabinet he's of Curiosity. overseeing it. So um, he created four steps to creating a monster for your film or story. Okay, yeah. let's and he have said, him. this is how he does it. This is what he told people. So One. first is inspiration comes from powerful sources. Yeah, I agree. Um, do you want to pick this up, Wyatt, and read this through? This says, The artisanal monster maker admits that he looks inwards to reconcile the imbalance between beauty <laughs> and tragedy and rage that many artists face. However, for monsters to be most effective, Del Toro insists that they need to draw from a multitude of sources, myth, literature, nature, and our own spirit. Mm-hmm. Very cool. This is the starting spot. Yeah, and this is his words of how he's like, you gotta, you gotta start with something. Maybe you're doing a remix of so something that exists. Yeah. So you know? let's 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 take what's on the screen here. Mm-hmm. For example, mm-hmm. a, the Predator. Predator. Yeah, 
Uh, how does this draw from myth, literature, nature? It's an alien. Um, well, first, it wasn't the first alien. Was it the first? Was it the first? Uh, did Predator come after Alien? It did. Okay, so I think Predator took inspiration from Alien as far as danger. Wait, aliens. no, so, I would so, say Predator so is Predator an alien. is isn't, very different. So, so it's not an alien. He is an alien. He is an alien. So I think what what makes Predator scary is, uh, you know, uh, an an enemy you can't see which is what a lot of monsters are, right? So he's invisible. An enemy that is stronger than you, so you're stronger both physically and technologically. Um, a creature that you don't know why it's killing. I think that's very important. And They went into, they have, they, even though he's technologically advanced, they gave him a lot of sharp teeth, sharp claws. Yeah. Because humans in their psyche have a fear. A fear of those of things. Of sharp and biological he, animals. And he is, he is, like, he's, he's, uh, um, what is it, uh, uh anthropomorphic like human-esque yeah. mm -hmm. but very different in the way that he looks with the teeth with the mouth but has human eyes yeah almost human eyes yeah which i think is very important intelligence as well i think makes him scary definitely uh the predator or not the predator the alien has very similar things in that it's killing it nobody knows why it's doing it it's mysterious. It's killing from the shadows. That's what makes monsters scary. Absolutely. So, and I think in the some way that that's a good breakdown of seeing like how mm -hmm. he how to take this this monster and yeah. break it down according to what Del Toro is saying. I'm trying to look up something right there. I want. Can to I move on to number yeah, two? Yeah, yeah, go for All it. Right. Well, I'm looking this up. So number two is tone and environment mm -hmm. are as are as important as creature design. Del Toro marks tone as a distinguishing factor in the process. Noting that the monster design must be of a piece with all their elements, must be of a piece with all their elements of the picture, both visual and and oral. Errol, um, what is that word? What do we? Aru? Did I? Cut? Oral. Oral. I don't yeah. know what that word means. Um, I I I don't know either. I don't know exactly. That may not be quite what he's saying <laughs> it's, it's um, probably a mis a miswrite no i would agree because we could take we could take the predator we could take the alien both settings the jungle is almost alien to humans mm -hmm. you know it's it's dark it's creepy it's wet it's very close together it's stagnant mm -hmm. you know um you don't know what's behind the next tree you don't know what's beyond the next uh, hill yeah uh, the spaceship in um the nostromo in alien it's it's big it's tight spaces you know and you've got this organic thing in a non-organic environment yeah. very scary Gollum mm -hmm. is while small and not necessarily super uh imposing is in dark dank caves where everything is tight everything is yeah. close and it's an environment that he is most versed most, most well versed in yeah which everybody that comes into that feels vulnerable oh yeah but Gollum is the threat in the space oh yeah um and so i think the environment has like if you can picture an environment that your your creature can cultivate itself in is the most threatening that's going to give you insight on what your monsters attributes it also are. has yeah. to be an yeah. environment that is uh scary to humans so i just watched the thing with kurt russell oh my god um <laughs> the oh the gosh. the while the creature is very very alien um the environment that they're in is antarctica mm -hmm. they can't escape no they can't get away it's cold it's 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 way below zero in these environments the environment has to be scary as well the worst gr most graphic monster i have seen i hate it i hate it say I hate it. it it's just a you know indiana jones uh the the, the first one yeah the, the prisoner of azkaban yes <laughs> Um, you know when they open up the Ark of the Covenant and everybody's face melts? Oh, I love that. That, probably like 10 times in the movie. 
I'm not kidding. Wait, the, they in, melt in people's the thing? faces? Yes. Ten yeah. times? Oh, yeah. Yes. There is this absolutely horrifying scene because the alien, the thing is in like a dog and it, it, it's all practical mm-hmm. and there's like tentacles coming out of the dog and it's splitting open and almost uh, Cronenberging on itself. Yeah. Its skin is gone. It's changing. It's morphing. It is haunting. I was eating a sandwich at the time. It, t- it was turning my stomach. It was it's um, so graphic. <laughs> however, gross. I forced myself to continue eating that sandwich, <laughs> watching it, right? Um there's there's a scene where the guy is like trying to resuscitate another dude. He goes to press on his chest. The chest opens up and there's teeth inside and it bites off his arm. Ooh. <gasps> it's so <gasps> it's there's so one graphic. Dude, his head splits Ugh. into like two like mouths and bites another dude's head. Dude, the thing is absolutely crazy as far as the uh practical effects it's go so graphic sounds like they're going so too graphic. hard yeah it's uh yeah. what's his name john carpenter who did halloween why um, did i want to say kurt russell he went a little harder he, after halloween is he, it, he went hard who's kurt russell one. uh he was in escape from new york he played uh uh star lord's dad in the second guardians of the galaxy movie. kurt russell kurt russell he was in the thing yeah. 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 I'm right. Kurt Russell's Kurt Russell. amazing. Keith David is in the thing. Keith David is amazing. Um, awesome. All right. So, point number three for creating a monster think about all the angles. So, like a piece of art, Del Toro points out a glance at the monster tells you its story and purpose and what it represents. Mm. Therefore, every design decision must be made. <laughs> My brain is turned off. Conscientiously. Every oh, design God. decision must be made conscientiously. Conscientious. When I when I when I hear this, I think of I think of what I'm seeing here, mm-hmm. right? I added this picture because this is what I thought of. What is this from? Yeah, what is I this don't from? know actually. It looks Wait, like did you add all these pictures? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was part of the rules. It's no, 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 no. <laughs> it I, looks like something changing, melting. Yeah, but what I thought was. People design the monsters in a similar fashion. Mm-hmm. They use mm-hmm. clay to build the masks, all that. Make so when he's saying from all the angles, I'm thinking when I'm thinking the practical realm where you have to get super detailed, like the Vecna situation. Mm-hmm. Like you you need to you need to see how light bounces off of your your monster that you're designing. You know what I mean? So and that that can be seen with the eye. Like wrap take a take a light like we have up here. And then just circle it around the head that you're crafting. What is the back of the head? What, is what, the, they, what the, they did for that, is they, the they talk about like? it in the Corridor Crew video, was they designed Vecna beforehand. They crafted uh, and printed and created all of the practical effects and makeup that go on the actor. Mm-hmm. They put it all on the actor, and now they have reference. So the actor is actually in the scene in those things and they can animate everything on top of him yeah right so they know what the lighting looks like on his face and then they add all of the visual stuff uh they said that like when he, the tentacle things are moving on mm-hmm. his neck and chest right that's all added after the fact but because they have the reference they know how everything works and how everything yeah. goes so they can see the whole picture because they already have it crafted out and practically in front of them which is really cool and like he says here a glance at the monster tells you its story and purpose and what it represents Mm -hmm. um that is pretty high level and you can get really detailed with that but these are like the things that you know that are important especially to del toro's process for Mm -hmm. crafting a monster um and then all of them no there's one more and uh this is actually one that I, I really like mm-hmm. where he talks about getting the actors to convey with their whole body. You know, so there's there I think I think it might be the guy that's in this suit. There's like a, a guy who's super popular in Hollywood for being like almost all of the practical monsters. Mm-hmm. He was uh I think he was him. He was also the 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 most recently on Del Toro's work, the guy who did the Shape of Water monster. Yeah. Um but he's been in all kinds of stuff. And he's probably the best monster actor. But we know also Andy Serkis as well. We know his yeah. movements. We know how he acts as creature in creature work, mm-hmm. right? With Gollum, with Caesar, with um, King Kong, 
mm-hmm. in the uh, Peter Jackson film. Um, yeah, it's your 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 actors have to be able to convey what the monster is. As and well. the monster is not a human, so you can't do all of your work here like you right. might do acting as a human. No, it's sometimes it's in the hands. Well, yeah, I, 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 it's also in, you know, shoulders. how, how does the, how, how do the people reacting to the monster act? Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Ripley and aliens, Sigourney Weaver, how is she reacting to the monster being in the room with her at the end of the movie yeah. when she's trying to escape? Right. And she's very scared and she's putting on the space suit and everything and everything is so scary and she's just trying to get it out the airlock mm-hmm. versus when she is in the um uh a very different suit she's in the um what's it called like a it's it's the like the Wolverine suit no the it's mech suit <laughs> the mech suit yeah. uh, in the second movie yeah yeah right she's in this thing that's fighting the queen and you it's know super cool and she's she's calling out the queen she's telling it to to get away from the girl Right, it's different acting. Get out of here! Both are, one is scared, but also trying to defeat it. One is, I'm gonna fight you, also trying to defeat it. Yeah. Right. How do they react? It, it's both very important to how the person watching the movie is seeing the monster. Yeah. Which is important. So, uh, and one other thing I wanted to bring up, if I may go back one. Mm-hmm. With the, the thing about the angles, this mm-hmm. also yeah. like represents like, does your monster have horns? And what does horns represent on your monster? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing, you know? What do the physical features represent? What do the physical features represent? So when you get down to the acting, you he says, we've got the creature's backstory, environment, and appearance, but now it needs to come to life. The monsters have to move. They have to do their thing if you're creating a monster. So... That happens through the movement. So you build on top of these things. You start with the backstory. You move to the environment to help inform the monster. Then you move to the appearance of the monster, which is the ultimate informing information. Mm-hmm. And then to final, bring it to life, and that's done through yeah. acting. So, or yeah. you know, creative artists on the computer. <laughs> well, it has to do. I it, it, not only the acting of the creature, but uh, the supporting the, talent. The, the acting of the people reacting to the creature. Yeah. yeah.